Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Y buenas tardes para los Latinos, like Mr. Eric, the eloquent speaker before me. Um, my name is um, Ono. I am duty bound to give praise and glory to God, the Almighty, who has been my strength and song since my meager beginnings, and with whom I've overcome the impossible. I'm one of the 11 intern survivalists who were inducted into the NC Step Cohort 3 phase of recruitment after undergoing a rigorous screening process that had not only asked, you know, assessed our skill sets, but we had to answer the question, why did we want to teach? Which I later found out was to ensure that our hearts were in complete alignment to the standards of purpose that our students and their families have earned and deserve. I would be remiss if I failed to acknowledge the architects and trailblazers of the program, district service directors, Ms. Stacy Costello and George Ward. Can you please stand again? Thank you. Now these two, um, th during this whole year of training, have been driving into our minds, you have to act professionally, you have to dress professionally, you have to be professional because you never know who you're going to run into at one of these conferences. It could be, you know, your future boss or, or not if you're dressed like you're going to a Mardi Gras carnival. So last night when we um, heard that wear your T-shirts, you know, I went into a panic and I actually emailed Stacy to say, hey, I'm speaking on behalf of the program. Is this the right attire? She said, no, you're not, you won't, you're not going to be alone, so wear your T-shirt. But just in case my future boss is out there, I need. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Candace? These two professionals are the benefactors of any success or accolades that we as a cohort can stay claim to personally or as a whole. I have engaged in extensive research seeking the proper language that would quantify the level of enthusiasm, nurturing, passion, and compassion that Stacy and George have selflessly shared with our diverse group. And to my despair, no such adjectives exist in scholarly print. However, I'm confident then when it does originate in, in, in written literature, it will rise to the level of urban dictionary idioms like, hey, FJ, you guys are fly. <laughs> I characterize myself as an inherently distrustful person as a culmination of situational circumstances that were imposed upon me during my um, early upbringing. Recalling the many instances of betrayal and broken promises, I have adopted a belief system whose doctrine is centered on personal action, or as uh, you say, walking the talk, has greater substantive value than well-spoken words. So for this metaphor, I apologize to all the English teachers in the, in the crowd. This past October, I lost my sense of true north when I awoke one morning to what scriptures describe as, though I walk through the valley of death, through the valley of the shadow of death, I found myself in a stranglehold of my 36-year-old companion and confidant, namesake, alcohol. How could this be, Dr. Phil? We had both coexisted in harmony and even made a pact of fidelity that could not be broken that could only be broken when only one of us ceased to exist. I asked Heineken how our relationship had deteriorated to this extent. The answer never came. You see, I was aware that my addiction was controlling and jealous, and pledging my allegiance to the NC STEP program constituted an illicit affair that would not be tolerated. Scorned, it went on the offensive and methodically used my weaknesses to dismantle my strengths. It ambushed me within, from within by unleashing the Pandora's box we had both repressed within the abyss 
of my reasoning by reincarnating the ghost and abomination that it assured me remain in the distant battle spaces of Iraq and Afghanistan. I was incapacitated, mentally paralyzed, and emotionally bankrupt. I wish death would rescue me for failing my sensational mentor, Sharon Green, and the 10th grade student body who had embraced me as one of their own. This deception on my part brought me to my knees, begging the King of Kings to please not forsake me. This time, I did receive an answer. I asked my wife to call Stacy with my dilemma because I was fear-stricken to face the repercussion I was convinced my testimonial would elicit, bringing my lifelong passion to be a teacher to a close before it even reached any form of traction. While my wife was still on the line, Stacy set up a meeting for the following morning with Caldwell Early College High School principal, Ms. Candace Hageman. My wife and I, upon, upon my arrival, I was thrown aback to see that Stacy had traveled from Raleigh to Hudson in order to attend the scheduled meeting. This morning, I walked out of the school on authorized sick leave, my head, up, head, up, uh, my head held up high with hope, with a support base that was committed to assist me reconsider the obstacles that resided in the blind spots of my acuity that was purposely distorting my future through smoky mirrors. Stacy and Candace, words of encouraged, your words of encouragement and genuine concern for the well-being of my family dismantled a fortress of skepticism that had blackened my heart to deflect the light rays of people's kindness and outreach hands. I subsequently attended inpatient substance abuse treatment at the Department of Veterans Affairs in Salisbury, and as I fast forward to the present, I stand before you reborn with the energy of a two-year-old. Having been given a second bite of the apple to say, thank you so much, Stacy and Candace, for believing in me, for not cutting your losses when, practica when practicality dictated so, for placing your reputation on the guillotine on my behalf, and most importantly, for saving my life. I will go forward from here, eternally beholden to you both, with the promise that I will never make you regret the decision you made that October morning. You both. <laughs> Thank you. You both validate the holy words found in Genesis 18 that reminds us God does not create mistakes. Candace and Stacy, could you please rise and can we have a hand, um, round of applause for them? Thank you, Stacy and Candace, uh, from the bottom of my heart. We first met Stacy, George, and our cohort team collectively on a sweltering July 14, 2014. And if the humidity was a precursor for what the program would demand, f demand from each of its participants, I, I would have invested in, in my stipend, my part of the stipend, on polar cooling gear products to counter the greenhouse effect that kept our feet to the fire the, that entire year. I cannot speak on behalf of my cohort three family without grossly minimizing the Her Herculean feats they have accomplished both individually and concertedly. However, I can speak with decisive certainty through personal observation that this talent pool of teachers is unparalleled. I am, I am honored to have had the opportunity to walk in their footstep and their shadow. Now, you may be inclined to challenge this affirmation by saying that I am being hubris or biased, but I will counter with my point of reference from which I draw comparisons from a 30-year military career that brought with it multiple ground combat tours with America's elite freedom enforcers, the United States Marine Corps. Cohort three and our predecessors, cohort four, who are also in attendance today, has selflessly undertaken this commitment with the known precept that climbing steep mountains was mandatory if we were to be noteworthy of the title of teacher, 
or maestra. We did not come into this program through the tra traditional academic ingress that was once required of a licensed educator. But please consider the advice posited by philosopher Plato that says, never discourage anyone who continually makes progress no matter how slow. And in retrospect, isn't this the precise ideology we want to infuse into our classrooms regardless of race, religion, socioeconomic status, or even the focus area conferred on your college degree? Reflecting back, members of both cohorts took on this arduous ch challenge by understanding it, respecting it, and acknowledging it as a formidable adversary. Yet they refused to fall prey to the frustration, fatigue, and fear that awaited us around every corner. Cohort family, be proud of yourselves and each other because today you stand victorious by turning trepidation into triumph, doubts into desire, reluctance into resilience that are all the hallmarks of a leader and a student of self, which now qualifies you to be a teacher for all from here on out. The military taught me many valuable life lessons and one of the ones that resonates as I look, take a look at my peers that are out in the audience, that a, a program in an institution takes on the personality of its leader. And looking upon this journey, everyone involved with our development has elevated our abilities from our everyday selves to, to a higher plane of performance that allows us to travel outside of our comfort zone with a swagger of confidence. Our training was tough and has taught us the virtues that we need to transfer to the classroom. It taught us about stamina, respect, and willpower. It taught us that we are no more worthy than the peer next to us. It taught us that our success is not ours alone, but that of our mentors, whole schools, and the students that made it fun being in the classroom once again. The program's objective was not to form a sheep and shepherd relationship, but to transfer ownership of personal accountability to our respective groups through collaboration because it is here where the, li where the fine line of demarcation separates leaders from the chest thumpers or keeps alive that unforgettable teacher who today remains relevant in your mind. Or that teacher that came into the profession with a pristine understanding that the wealth ob obtained in the profession did not derive, it's not derived from the payroll section in the admin office, but from the successes accomplished by the students who are now better prepared to face the world than they, than they were when they entered your classroom. I apologize to you for misrepresenting myself as Ono. My name is, uh, my birth name is Fausto. This was my segue to making a statement that emphasizes the importance that every child deserves our best. Allow me to clarify, please. I was that student whom, when you scroll down your class roster at the beginning of the year, the, the dismay inflection of, oh no, not him, echoed through the school's ventilation system and the empty hallways. Of course you know me. I'm still in your classroom and continue to be your greatest challenge. I'm the student who cannot uh, organize, who fails to follow directions, who cannot remain on task, is not attentive, and has trouble interpreting and remembering information. The student who cannot execute basic skills who has low expectations from others, and who has difficult learning or making fundamental connections to basic concepts. It was my fortune that a six foot blonde hair, green eyed, seventh grade English teacher named Mr. Lipson, who refused to be intimidated by the reputation that Fort Apache the Bronx uh, and its menacing landscape portrayed to keep the man out, and he intercepted my life. Mr. Lipson did not interpret my performance as being disruptive, deficient, or even needing special needs intervention. He inquired beyond the superficial and found that my reluctance to learn came atta attached with childhood abuse, single parent home, absent father who abandoned his firstborn to reproduce others, welfare recipient st stigmatism, difficulty converting the application of Spanish into English, and inheriting street role models prior to his arrival categorized as pimp, drug dealer, crackhead, hooker, 
purse snatchers, and gang members, just to name a few of our most distinguished South Bronx aristocrats. Today, Mr. Lipson, I am here to carry on the work that you started in 1974, and I pray that the Holy Spirit guide my accomplishments with the same fervor of compassion and tireless drive you manifested towards me. Until we see each other in heaven, I'm off to influence and shape the young minds of America's greatest assets in your name, Mr. Lipson. And leave no doubt in, in those young minds that education is the universal equalizer and that because of you, I became a teacher at the age of 53. Thank you very much, everyone, for affording me this glorious opportunity to speak to you. And may God bless America and you and your families. Thank you for all you do. Now, on behalf of NC STEP, we would like to recognize the NC STEP teachers that are attending the Summer Institute. If you could please stand and to be recognized. Cohort three, Alex Lodon. Allison Wright. Amanda Tuttle. Ashley Smith. Carol Monroe. Shelly Nixon. Linda Donier and Hannah Wallach. Thank you. Thank you so much, and great job, guys. Love the companionship this past year. Now, we had Stephanie Roddy and Carolyn Moraes, who could not be here today, but it's he are here in spirit. Now, cohort four, if you could please stand. Okay, cohort four began the program in January, and it's 36 teachers long. And if, if it's any indication of the way that George and, and Stacy drove us, um, you're gonna have some 36 challenging professionals here in about another year. Okay. Now we would like to recognize the whole school's mentors, principals, and staff who made all of this possible by providing, providing a safe place to develop, a comfortable atmosphere to learn, and the continued support that remains in place long after the program is complete. If the whole schools would please stand for a moment as your name is called, my 2014 National Blue Ribbon alma mater, Caldwell Early College High School. Early College Forsyth. The Middle Early College at Guilford Technical Community College, Jamestown. Madison High School. City of Medicine Academy. Edgecombe Early College High School, <laughs> Brunswick Early College High School, <laughs> Union County Early College High School, <laughs> Vance Early College High School, <laughs> and Cross Creek Early College High School. Now, I know you've had enough of me, so I, it will be my pleasure to introduce Dr. Angela Quick, um, vice, um, Senior Vice President of North Carolina New Schools.